Good morning. Uh, as we continue our audiovisual uh, check with our digital verger, and those of you that are watching online, please go ahead and leave your name and uh, maybe what state or country you're watching from. Uh, the only thing I have really to share this week is we're going to, we actually got in our Starlink system, our internet system, so we'll be probably connecting that this coming week. So we're real curious to see if you have a different online experience for those that are watching. Also, we just remind folks that on May 25th, we're having our parade, the Natalia Blue Bonnet Parade, where uh, we want everyone to be able to join us. Um, we have candy for the kids to throw out. And if you're here and you'd like a St. Matthias t-shirt that we will provide, I have a list in the back. Just put your name and shirt size, and we will be ordering them this week. So uh, kids and adult sizes. And that way, everyone will be wearing St. Matthias that wants to be there, or just then you're, you're around your home. Um, and I believe that's all I have. So it looks good. Good morning. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 401. Oh, my dear. 
like to welcome everyone this morning. Our service is going to begin on page 323. And for those of you that are just joining us online, please leave your name or state or country you're watching from, and we will share that during announcements. During the season of Lent, which goes for a few more weeks, we will be using Rite One. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins, his mercy endureth forever. Almighty God, into whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second one is unlike it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory is always to have one mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold the fast and unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can find your, the uh, reading for the Psalm 121 in your bulletin, and we'll be responding by whole verse. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. So that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. What then are we to say was gained by Abram, our ancestor, according to the flesh? For if Abram was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abram believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works, wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as something due. But to one who without works, Trust him who justifies the ungodly. Such faith is reckoned as righteousness. For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no, no law, 
neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of the water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, and the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, who forever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. If you were going to ask anyone to give a chapter and verse from the Bible, it would probably be the most famous Bible verse ever. You see it on the placards in the end zones of football games. It's spray painted on the overpasses on the interstate. You know what one I'm mentioning? We just had it, John 3.16. Okay. So, and it's like no other verse in the Bible. More people likely have it committed to memory than any other verse in the Bible. And for this reason, it's a great verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, this single verse boils down the entire gospel message into a one simple sentence. That's why this verse is so awesome. You know, I have found over the years that, uh, I'm sure you might have as well, that God's Spirit is continually challenging us to expand our preconceived understanding of Scripture to help us grow in faith. So that's why our Bible studies... Wednesdays at 7, 
have opened up Scripture to a new understanding. And for us, we can read the words from 2,000 years ago for a 21st century understanding, putting what we read into context. Now, have you ever been part of a conversation in which you thought you were both talking about the same thing, and then bits and pieces of the conversation just don't quite fit together? and you eventually discover that you're talking about two entirely different things. So this is what happens in Nicodemus's conversation with Jesus. So we might consider how we might identify with Nicodemus in our gospel reading. So here was a man who was highly versed in the scriptures. He was a leader of the Jews, member of the Sanhedrin, the group that decided the faith and life of Israel. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and says to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Now, even though Nicodemus thought he had an understanding of what it meant to be a person of God, even though he was a theological scholar, a member of the Sanhedrin, the Spirit of God continued to challenge his perceptions in which he put his trust. And at the end of the gospel, later on, Nicodemus again appears, but as a disciple of Christ who worshipfully cares for his dead body. So when we're baptized, we receive the Holy Spirit. And when you were baptized, the priest said, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then he places a hand on the forehead and marking on the forehead the sign of the cross and saying the person's name. You are healed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's forever. Now at that point, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we have the rest of our lives to live in that spirit and allow it to do its works. So being a born of the Spirit isn't an act that we accomplish, but it's an act that God does on our behalf. And being born from above isn't something that we do. We aren't the ones doing. It's something done to us by God. And in a similar way, being born the first time wasn't something we did. Our physical births were gifts beyond our understanding. Being born is a gift that happens to us from outside ourselves. And being born again isn't something that we do. It's the Holy Spirit which does the action. And it's the wind of the Spirit which is active in our lives. And unlike normal wind, something that the, the wind of the Spirit isn't something that we can feel. But we believe, we have faith that is active in our lives. And the Holy Spirit isn't just some vague idea, but we believe that it's part of the Holy Trinity, the three persons of God. God the Father, the, uh, who created, God the Redeemer, and Jesus Christ, who saved, and God the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies us and makes us holy. Now, while I was preparing for the sermon, I was reminded of something when I was looking about the wind that I haven't thought of in years. Growing up in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, I was blessed to come from a sailing family. My grandfather taught my brother and I how to sail. And my dad even made my brother a small sailboat and really nice neighbors gave a mid-sized sailboat to my brother and I. And I really enjoyed taking that sailboat out into the bay without an outboard motor I was totally dependent on the wind. I had to learn how to read the wind, let it guide me to where I wanted to go. And suddenly, if there wasn't any wind, everything stopped. So I'd be stuck in one place, unable to move forward. But with the wind, I used a tiller to get the sails to catch the wind and let it take me to my destination. And I had to learn to trust the wind. 
while the wind was always there, I learned you just don't push off from the shore and start sailing. You don't point the tip of the bow in the direction that you want to go. So when you're reading the wind, the wind is coming from the side. You might have to zigzag just to go forward. You always let the wind take you in the direction that it wants you to go, even though it isn't always the most direct route. And we call that tacking. We tack against the wind. Jesus speaks about the wind in our gospel lesson this morning, and he says, the wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with the spirit everyone who is born from above with the Spirit. Now, Jesus is describing the wind and using it to help Nicodemus understand the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is like the wind. We can't see it, but, and we don't know where it goes. We can't even explain how it works, but we know it's there. And in the same way, the Holy Spirit is in our lives we can't see it. We don't know where it goes. It can't even explain how it works, but it's there. And then what do you think Jesus means when we read, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, and whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So when Jesus was lifted up on the cross, he wasn't an inanimate object. He was a living breathing human being who felt the pain of the nails that attached him to the cross. He gave his life for us, for all who might look upon him, lifted up on that rough cross in order that we might be delivered from the consequences of our sins. And as we move further into the season of Lent and closer to our services of Holy Week, where we recall our Lord's gift of himself and our redemption, let's all pray that God's spirit is open in our hearts to embrace the event of our Lord's passion as a daily experience in our lives. And may the spirit empower us to turn to the cross every moment of our life and truly believe the most often quoted passage from this gospel. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Amen. So on page 326, let us stand and affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen.
Prayers of the People can be found on page 383. 323. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all of the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city of divine, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which, gives us, which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirmed, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering, without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Matthias and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. To thee, O Lord, our God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Pray for the unity of the Anglican community and the Episcopal Church. Anglican Cycle of Prayer, Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. Diocesan Cycle of Prayer. Give thanks for St. David's, San Antonio, and St. John's, Sonora. President Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishops David and Rayford, Bishop Condajor David, Priest Father Dexter, Diocesan Samarians, President Joe, Governor Greg. We especially pray for strength and healing for Roberta, OT, Allison, Amber, Stephen, Tom, Joyce, Lillian, Les, Bob, Crystal, Cherie, Lisa, Erica, Ronald. For those who have died, military prayer list, Haley. For persecuted Christians everywhere, and for our outreach, outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, Third Street Closet, Military Ministry, Mission Divine, and World Missions. Now let's take a moment, you can add your own prayers and intercessions. Let us pray. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And let us confess, humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. 
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, in the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who is of great mercy, has promised the forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you into everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Great job. Peace. She does that to me, but uses it because I'm wrong. <laughs> so I need to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we changed things up. Yeah. Oh, peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord. So wonderful to have you here. John, peace of the Lord. Allison, peace of the Lord. Okay. Okay. Please be seated. We do have a few folks out of town. Uh, Meg is at a quilt show, and she's, she sent me a couple photos. One, she did a quilt of honor, a quilt of valor for our disabled veterans, and it looks really nice. And then, and a new cross, because um, Meg did most of these that you see up here, and uh, there'll be a new one. It's beautiful. It's of a cross that she'll be, she'll be joining or bringing. Uh, I'd like to welcome Karen and Joe in Westlaco. We have Pat in New York. And we have Roberta in Natalia. That's it. Okay, so uh, let's see. On March 25th, we are going to be in the, um, the Natalia Blue Bonnet Parade. And if you haven't had a chance, please put your name and T-shirt size we're going to be providing everyone T-shirts, whether you're at the parade or not, just that you could wear around so people will know uh, you're, you're from St. Matthias. And let's see. Um, okay. On Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday or Thursday, I was at the Divine Chamber of Commerce. And the reason why I'd like people to start wearing T-shirts around, because I, when I'm downtown, I wear my collar. And someone, I didn't know anyone there. And someone said, you're that Episcopal priest. <sighs> okay, okay. <laughs> then someone said, and here's the better part, Allison's an Episcopal and she goes to your church. I didn't know who these people were, but Allison, our, our local missionary, uh, is out there getting the word out. So thank you, Allison. Um, after the service today, I did, again, Meg always makes these wonderful desserts for us to share afterwards. 
I don't really cook. I can grill, but I don't cook. So I did pick up a multi type of cake that's got sections for like chocolate and lemon and all these different things. So, uh, and but today I'd like to recognize for birthdays and anniversaries and. Uh, one of the things I'd like later on is we can get when your birthdays or anniversaries are, anniversary. Um, so we're going to be doing March. And we don't have anyone in with a birthday or anniversary in March, correct? Uh, okay, but we do online. And they are actually watching right now. So Pat's birthday uh, is this month. And I'd like to do a blessing for, for Pat. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Pat, as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we have an anniversary this month, and it is Joe and Karen. And I believe they'll be here this coming weekend. So next Sunday, we will have Joe and Karen from Westlaco, who also have a house here in Divine. And we can't wait till you move here in August. So, so this is for Karen and Joe. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And in case I forget to mention, Allison and John, if you want a dozen eggs, they're back there. Phyllis, if you want a dozen eggs, they're back there. Rob and Erica, if you want a dozen eggs, they're, they're back there. Okay, so, so walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself in offering and sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is hymn number 637.
for those of you that know Esme, she's learning how to do the doxology, so we might have a live doxology uh, in the future. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is meet and right for thee. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross of our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty we offer these holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee. The memorial of thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe and bless and sanctify with the word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission for our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and we present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that we, he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy, through our own, our manifold sins, we offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our burden, duty, and service, 
not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, Almighty Father, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. James, the body of Christ. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless you in the coming week. Rob, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. John, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Allison, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless you in the coming week.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us, us thereby of thy favor and good goodness towards us that we are the very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou thus hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds into the knowledge of our Lord, of love of God and his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you forever, always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 671. 691. sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to bear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed Through many dangers, toils and snares I have already come Tis grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me on. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my heart secures. He will my shield and potion be as long as life endures. Shining as the sun With no less days to sing God's praise Than when we first begun Go in peace to love and serve the Lord Well, we got a little surprise on our hymn